Okay, uh, again, let me just mention some of what's coming up. Republicans prepare contempt citation against Eric Holder of her Fast and Furious, CBS News. Los Angeles marks 20th anniversary of riots. That's what the Attorney General tried to start with. The whole Trayvon Martin thing turned out they had instigators inside the protest. That's why the uh, new Black Panther Party was authorized to call for violence. This is truly a criminal group. You're like, why would the president want riots? It's called problem, reaction, solution. Why would Hitler blow up his own government building and pose as a savior? Yeah, it's called the Hegelian dialectic. We're going to be going over that uh, again after the break. The big news, because it gets into total propaganda. Obama exploits bin Laden hoax for election propaganda. I'm going to go back over the fact that this is an admitted fraud. Sure, nobody I know bought that they actually killed him. Then they had to kill the SEALs that were involved to cover it up later on that helicopter, remember? Not the one they blew up that night, but the next one they blew up with SEALs on it? Yeah. I've talked to SEALs, by the way. They all know what happened. Oh, yeah, that's a big wake-up call inside the government. Uh, but uh, continuing here, uh, we're going to be going over all of that. And Osama's supposed killer... Obama bragging about it at the White House I'm a movie star correspondence dinner. So that is all coming up. Also, banks cooperate to track Occupy protesters. Well, yeah, the big six Federal Reserve mega banks. They are the government. They took over. All of that is coming up. I also have a report in the science stack. This is... A report out of Reuters. How long have I been telling you this? But here it is. Scientists call for a rethink on consumption and population reduction. Oh, you're Scientific American. Royal Society calls for redistribution of wealth and more British control, more birth control to save the planet. And I had a Freudian slip there saying more British control, more eugenics control out of England. I'll be breaking that down. But first... Let's get into these two reports right here. Here is the New York Times. And when I saw this, I pinched myself because I've known this. I've reported it at nauseum. Uh, even some mainstream media has reported on it. If you follow each case, they almost always get dropped. They almost always find a mentally retarded person, generally 75 to 80 IQ, mildly retarded, who has been profiled, been in prison, or is on welfare, or, a, or someone who's been... Uh, had serious head trauma. They've also used head trauma victims as one of their favorites. And I've talked about it. I could go to downtown Austin where I live, and I could find a schizophrenic or a homeless person and offer them $10,000 and get them to dress up in a uniform and say they work for Al-Qaeda and say that they're ready to blow stuff up if I give them $10,000 more. And that's what the FBI does. They just take a year or so to get them an apartment, and set them up, and then try to get them to blow stuff up. First World Trade Center, FBI cooked the bomb, trained the driver, gave them the detonators. That was in the New York Times and CBS News even at the time. Because the, the head guy they hired to do it knew they were setting him up, so he recorded the FBI ordering him to go ahead with the bombing. And they let the two mentally retarded guys, I'm sorry, that's what happened, go ahead and thank God they didn't park it up against the column like they were supposed to. The globals had to come back and finish the job a few years later on 9-11. Uh, continuing, though, uh, the New York Times today, uh, terrorist plots hatched by the FBI. Wow, sounds like InfoWars.com article. David Shipler, I guess the New York Times wants to stay in the game and actually cover some real news. The United States has narrowly been saved from lethal terrorist plots in recent years, or so it has seemed. A would-be suicide bomber was intercepted on his way to the Capitol, a scheme to bomb synagogues and shoot Stinger missiles at military aircraft was developed by men in Newborough, New York. That's just like all the synagogues and, 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 and black churches that get the swastikas put on them. And in every case, the groups do it to themselves. And people say, well, why? Why do it to yourself? Really? Why'd Hitler blow up his own Capitol building? <laughs> Why'd our government attack its own ships and say the Viet Cong did it to start the Vietnam War? Gulf of Tonkin. I mean, you don't know Why? Let me give you a uh, Final Fantasy is a cartoon. Pretty good movie. And the head general wants to be able to take over, so he lets the enemy into one of the main command bases. You know, children's movies understand this, but adults go, I just don't see why the government would let terrorists attack us. Because they use the terrorists. It's not our government. It's foreign banks. 
Continuing, but all these dramas were facilitated by the FBI. It goes on. Men in Newborough, New York, had a fanciful idea to fly explosive-laden model airplanes into the Pentagon, and the Capitol was hatched in Massachusetts. But all these dramas were facilitated by the FBI, whose undercover agents and informers posed as terrorists, offering a dummy missile, fake C-4 explosives, a dismantled suicide vest, and rudimentary training. Suspects naively played their parts until they were arrested. Yeah, the guy that was going to blow up the Christmas tree in Portland. Turned out he had been totally picked, told to attack the Christmas tree by the FBI. That's the issue. They go find literal loons or mentally retarded people. They profile them. And then they tell them what to attack. Klan groups, all of it. Black, New Black Panthers, uh, uh, top white supremacists, over and over again. All over the country, it's admitted. When an Oregon student, Mohammed Osama Muhammad, I mean, what a moron that changed his name to that, thought of using a car bomb to attack a festive Christmas tree lighting ceremony in Portland. The FBI provided a van loaded with 655-gallon drums of inert material, harmless blasting caps, and detonator cord, and a gallon of diesel fuel to make the van smell flammable. An undercover FBI agent even did the driving with Mr. Muhammad in the passenger seat to trigger the bomb. And they go, is this legal? Is it legitimate? Folks, of course it's not. The point is the FBI has carried out the attacks before. I point you back to the New York Times back in 1993 with the first World Trade Center attack. Now let me bring you to the next little, little tidbit. Remember I pointed out that Breitbart was saying he was going to release that day stuff with Obama at communist meetings and, 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 and calling for you know, communism and, and race war and stuff like that. He died hours before he was going to release it. And the media said within an hour and a half, not more than two hours, that don't worry, it's natural causes, nothing to see here, move along. Even though it takes you know, three, four weeks with Whitney Houston, months for Michael Jackson, anybody else. They, within an hour and a half, just the media just said, listen, he, you know, he died normally. We don't know how he died, but just go to sleep. And then the main medical examiner's office came out and said, well, our preliminary autopsy's done, but the toxicology isn't. There's not extreme trauma. There's not too much blunt force trauma, so we're, we're saying that you know, he wasn't killed by that, but we'll have our final report. That got spun into Alex Jones is wrong. Breitbart. You know, Alex Jones is terrible conspiracy theorist. Breitbart, the coroner, says natural causes, when that's not what they said. All I said was we should look into this. Well, well, what's World Net Daily reporting? It's also out in the L.A. papers. Breitbart's coroner Poisoned to death. The police are looking into who may have killed the coroner who was poisoned and is dead from poison. They've confirmed that. Oh, oh, uh, but I'm sure it's a coincidence, right? I mean, the government never lies to us. Everything's fine. Go back to sleep. We'll be right back. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread. Go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Scientists Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. More and more of America and the rest of the world is waking up that you better be involved in politics or basically get enslaved. And that the true American virtue is being informed and is being involved and is detesting the culture of dependency and big government. But conservatives are waking up to the fact that big mega corporations are funding and manipulating and controlling the politicians who then turn government into a giant vacuum cleaner to suck up your wealth and transfer it to them in government contracts and bailouts, but more importantly, to shut down the mega corporations' competition. I'm a local Austin quote business. I hire over 30 people here locally. I also have contractors in other countries. 
and people like the Watsons over in England, the Watson brothers, Paul Watson, Steve Watson. But um, I can't even get a phone call back if I call the city of Austin, and, and we've done it, and said, yeah, I'd like one of your people to come out and I, talk about cutting my taxes or uh, getting rid of uh, my local taxes, uh, waiving them like you do for all these big companies, and I'll hire more people. And they laugh at you. But I was reading uh, in California in a town where Apple only has 10 employees, they pay no taxes. And wherever they have them, they pay no taxes. Because it's Al Gore who's on the board, and they have suicide nets around the Apple factories in China, some of the worst in the planet, because they want pure, giant profits. And that pig, Al Gore, was here a few months ago and got over $8 million cut off in taxes for Apple. That pig that's talking about how I need to have my taxes raised, and Warren Buffett, the biggest recipient of bailout money in the last four years, trillions of dollars to his companies, over three billion to him individually in one phase. Individually, three billion of your tax money. And that piece of trash gets up there and uses class warfare envy with ignorant working class people and says, gee, my secretary pays a higher percentage than I do. That's not fair because you wrote the stinking laws they changed in the 80s and 90s. He literally wrote the change to get rid of Glass Steagall. He literally, out of anybody, is the author of this. And then he sits there after he's done this to us and wants to raise my taxes. Anybody making over $125,000 a year individually, quarter million collectively. That's not the rich. That's the people that buy cars and houses. That's the people that go on vacations. That's the people that get their hair done, that come to your restaurant. And all over Austin, where I live, one of the wealthiest cities in the country, I see shops and places clo closing. Places I've gone to for decades, shutting down. I see the big box stores, half empty even. This is the blight of big government. And no amount of tens of trillions will ever pay off all the derivatives garbage these bankers have had to sign on to. Now, continuing here, none of that matters, though. None of that matters. Does it matter if America is really in a depression or the housing market sinking faster or unemployment and close to 50 million on food stamps? Does it matter if they're throwing the Bill of Rights and Constitution out the window and increasing all the domestic uh, spy funding and TSA in every major city now, running warrantless checkpoints on highways outside of the Tenth Amendment, not just the Fourth Amendment? It doesn't matter because Bin Laden got killed on International Commie Day, May Day. A year ago, doesn't matter, I had top State Department official and CIA black op you know, trainer, the guy that wrote Tom Clancy's books with him, CFR member, Dr. Steve Pachenik, made headlines all over the country. When he first came on my show in 2002 and said Bin Laden died of Marfan's and kidney failure, the American hospital in Dubai, then it came out on CBS later and confirmed it. This broke here. Just like it broke that the underwear bomber was gotten on the plane by the U.S. government. Kurt Haskell, who, by the way, is on tomorrow, the lawyer with his wife, sees all this happen. He gets on with no, no uh, passport. Turns out the U.S. government demanded they give him a visa, Mutalib. And then a month and a half later on C-SPAN, the Undersecretary of State admits they were ordered by an unnamed agency to get the underwear bomber on the plane, drugged out of his mind. I'm digressing. Pachenik goes, you got a lot of courage. I want to come on your show and tell you something. He comes on. He says he died. He's on ice. Bush is going to roll him out in the 04 election. This is Pachenik. You can look up Steve Pachenik. They have like Times of London saying, you know, you know he, can, he manipulated the communist into killing the prime minister of Italy and stuff. I mean, this is a guy who's, who assassinated, you know, presidents in foreign countries. You know, real Mission Impossible guy. Okay, the real deal. By the way, I want to get Pachinik on this week. I keep forgetting because it's this whole Bin Laden thing. Then Walter Cronkite comes out and says, yes, Bush is going to use this against Kerry. Don't you dare try it. Then Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State under Hillary Clinton, comes out on CNN and NBC. I played the clips here. You can look them up. We've written articles about it. And says, yeah, he's dead. They're going to roll him out. So they backed off and later pulled him out. But the issue here that I'm getting at is that if you go to InfoWars.com, we've republished the articles from last year with the latest info about how ridiculously fake it is. 
and how Obama at the correspondence banquet in a TV ad they're running. What's the name of that stupid TV ad we're about to play it again? One Chance. Sounds like prom night or something. One Chance. It's more like spring break. <laughs> The point is, I'm sorry. It's just this is this is so. This is such theater. There he is at the correspondence dinner with all these Hollywood people to make it look like government is Hollywood. Edward Bernays, the head of psychological warfare for the Department of War, pre-Department of Defense, came up with all that. He said, "We'll put Hollywood people up there with government. We'll blur the lines. We'll make it like they're stars." This will make the public submit to government. Plus, they'll think the president actually runs everything, so we can put a new one in every four to eight years and fool the public. Uh, by the way, the author of Tragedy and Hope, the head of Georgetown Political Science, uh, Carol Quigley, Bill Clinton's mentor, also wrote that in Tragedy and Hope. Then a Ron Paul comes along, doesn't play ball with that, and it screws up their whole fantasy land, so they've got to cheat him in the first few primaries until it looks like he's not a winner. Sad issue, though. Now it's admitted he won in Maine and Iowa, like I told you he did. He was the leader. He would have been the nominee. That shows the power of the liberty movement now. They had to steal it. Oh, yeah, this week it all got confirmed. He really won. What is it, four states he really won they stole? And the Republican leadership says, we don't care if it's proof he won. You're not getting it. <laughs> Anyways, continuing. Um, article up at Infowars.com. Obama exploits bin Laden hoax for election propaganda. Let's go over the lies. There was that first Situation Room photo they released that uh, May Day Sunday evening a year ago. And it was clearly a staged photo. Looked like a movie poster. Hillary's covering her mouth. Obama's looking all serious. The general's looking down on the computer. Everybody's, you know, it's like football coaches or something. And they said we were watching him be killed by the SEALs live cams. They all tell the lie on TV. They watched him die. The people say, release the footage. They go, oh, we didn't tape it, actually. Oh, and bin Laden wasn't in a firefight. He didn't use his wife as a shield. And then there was no dialysis machine, by the way, in the house he'd been in for years. Almost on death's door with the CIA visiting 2001. CBS News report on it 2002. It's a fact. Al-Qaeda is used to attack Libya and now Syria. I have articles today where we're told Al-Qaeda is not a threat now. They're our friends. Uh, it's the American people are the new enemy. So the war on terror is over, but it, now the war is on you. But side issue. You get this giant theater that no one I know bought. You get the way it's released. You have the fake Situation Room photo. And then we say, well, show us the body. Oh, sorry, it got thrown in the ocean. Then a bunch of people speak out on the ship. They all get disciplined. Record number of people dishonorably discharged off that carrier. You have the stage photo that we've got up at Infowars.com. Then they say, well, it's a Muslim way to be thrown in the sea. That, no, that's against Islamic law. Doesn't matter. It's meant to be a shoddy story. It's meant to be just absolutely rotten because they don't care. It's all a big joke to them. You know, we have a clip we'll play later of uh, Obama laughing and saying, you know, my um, dad was born in Kenya, but I was born in Hawaii, and he winks, and everybody laughs. He, he's blocked all his high school college records. It's on record he had two different names. That's now been confirmed. That was called a conspiracy theory, remember? They said three years ago they'd released the official form and said there is no other form. Then they released the new fake one that's been proven fake. And nobody's got a more covered up background. And then Breitbart is set to release video of him at meetings with the Weatherman bombers, who we later know paid for his house and tuition and stuff. And he's going to release it and he dies. And I... Easy, do it yourself instantly. And we're going to go to break. It is Sunday, the 29th day of April 2012, and we've got a whole other hour after this segment coming up, and I'm going to open the phones at that point. In fact, here is the toll-free number on any of the issues I've raised or any topics you'd like to get into or questions or comments you have. The Sunday number is different than the weekday number. It's 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. And we're going to take first-time callers on this Sunday show. First-time callers, please, 877-789-ALEX. Please give others a chance to get involved. We have millions of listeners, and I want everybody to be able to chime in who haven't been able to get through. Now, listen, you've got Obama last year saying, let's not spike the football so he could have his cake and eat it, too, but then spiking the football 
in producing a Hollywood movie with real Navy SEALs about the killing of bin Laden and releasing that. Just unbelievable propaganda. You've got fake situation room photos saying they watch live footage, a totally fake story they go back on and later admit isn't true. You've got the Navy SEAL helicopter that witnesses said was had somebody piled on board with them. It blows up, killing those. Then the Navy SEALs start speaking out. A large portion of SEAL Team 6 is packed suspiciously on a National Guard helicopter. We're told they're flying out to save Army Rangers. Turned out that wasn't true. It blows up, killing all on board. I've talked to a Navy SEAL who has a friend in SEAL Team 6, and they say, yes, a bomb was on board. And they think it could have been, guess who? Some of them think, oh, it must have been Al-Qaeda, yeah, that got on the base and did it. Or they're smart enough to understand, no, traitors run the government. So dead men tell no tales. But, but, but think about it. We have a government caught lying to us over and over again. We have a so-called government caught stealing trillions of dollars. We have a government caught doing thousands of different lethal tests on our own troops. Project Shad, chemical, biological, radiological, atomic soldiers, Tuskegee experiments, all the new experiments coming out. A national security state based on eugenics, where they believe we're dumb animals and openly brag about how they created bisphenol A to sterilize us and how they're putting sterilants in the water. I've got articles on that today. Reuters, scientists call for rethink on consumption, population reduction. This is the religion of the people running things. They think of you as animals. And so we're just supposed to sit there when known liars tell us an official story. We're supposed to just sit there and go, well, you, you've lied to me hundreds of times that I've caught you before. And you've been caught doing all these terrible things, but I'm just going to believe you now. Because you say so. And then if you question known liars, you're called a supposed conspiracy theorist. Which means someone who questions known liars. It'd be like if you went to the carnival and some carnival barker was saying, come on, get over here, you're going to win. And when you don't win, they make fun of you and say, come on, you can do it. You can get something for the little lady. Uh, if you say, well, you're being a carnival barker manipulating me, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, you're making a judgment about known liars. But they're saying don't have judgment. Don't have discernment. You're walking down a dark alley at night to get to your car. You see somebody creep into the shadows. Looks like they've got a club in their hand or a wrench. Maybe you go back the other direction. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist for making a judgment on known liars. Now, again... They won't show us the body. They say they threw him in the ocean. They discipline a bunch of people on the ship at record numbers who are starting to say it was a bunch of baloney. A bunch of the Navy SEALs involved die in two separate incidents. It's all scripted. They change the story over and over again. And I've got high-level government sources, including... This was bizarre when I got contacted by a currently serving super high-level CIA person to just say, we want to tell you you're absolutely right about bin Laden and everything else. That was the message. And that was relayed to me. That person was relayed through to me by a national talk show host. National talk show host. This person would like to talk to you. This, they are who they say they are. They would like to tell and, 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 and then I get on the telephone and I'm told this message. But I've already had Pachenik on. He's the guy that co-wrote. He's got all these big Hollywood movies he wrote. He's the guy that wrote, was the expert on a bunch of Clancy's books. A famous black op assassination commander. A psychiatrist. He tells us it's all fake. Then Walter Cronkite comes up and backs it up. And then Madeleine Albright does. And that doesn't even get news coverage. But what about Fast and Furious? This is a criminal White House, so criminal. They're caught shipping guns into Mexico, drugs back into the U.S., and now we learn hand grenades. Yeah, it wasn't just some gun shops they told sell guns. That was the cover once it started to come out in federal cases where one arm didn't know what the other arm was doing. And they were bringing people into court who were declaring national security and how all these documents, and the feds were coming in and saying, yeah, drop this. They're a national security asset. Las Zetas, 
Sinaloa cartel, Mexican mafia, and then it turned out, this has all come out in the court cases, it's been in the Chicago Tribune, El Paso Times, it's never on the nightly news. It's always ATF let guns be sold from gun shops to track them. No, it was rocket launchers, it was RPGs, it was grenades from military bases, it was Navy SEALs and Army troops, now been busted doing it, they're now burning their own minions. It's in the news, back of the paper. Shipping weapons into Mexico, trying to knock out drug cartels that weren't laundering their money through the big six Federal Reserve banks who've been caught laundering the money and don't get in trouble, i.e. Wells Fargo, you know who that is, Warren Buffett, they're part of it in, in a two-year span that came out two years ago, this is four years ago it started, $376 billion, Bloomberg AP, narcotics trafficked, they even, they even leased and ran the aircraft through Wachovia and Wells Fargo. Oh, yeah, the aircraft, everything. Every, everything. Oh, they're ni he's a nice old man with an ice cream cone, though. Every time you see Warren Buffett, he's like, I got a vanilla ice cream. I'm non-threatening. I'm non-threatening. Ha-ha, gimmick. I'm a nice old man. Raise my taxes because I get it and bail out money. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> you idiots are nothing you won't buy. Oh, but the... Chickens are coming home to roost. Republicans prepare contempt citation against Eric Holder over Fast and Furious. Yeah, hand grenades, rocket launchers, all of it. Hand grenades, rocket launchers, drugs. It came out in the federal courts. You can look it up. They, the, the FBI, eight federal agencies were involved, not just ATF, were shipping guns to, to, to Mexican mafia and others in Chicago, in Indianapolis, in Dallas, uh, just all to the middle of the country bringing the goods into you and your family. Just like the troops openly grow the opium, and when the troops started speaking out, they go, what do we do? We hide it in plain view. Just put it on the news, and suddenly, all over the news three years ago, yes, the troops grow the opium, load it on aircraft, but you're going to jail when you run it up your veins. <laughs> they keep it illegal to keep the price up so they rob your house or your jewelry, maybe kill your wife while they're at it to get the smack. Which would be a couple dollars and they'd be seen as social outcasts and not cool, but instead it's a lot more because your banks have got to get the higher price. Got to keep it illegal. Got to give the cops a reason to kick down your door. Republicans prepare contempt citation against Eric Holder over Fast and Furious. House Republicans investigating the Fast and Furious scandal plan to pursue a contempt citation. As Attorney General Eric Holder, senior congressional aides, told CBS News. And then, again, if you go to Infowars.com, we have the 10 facts from almost a year ago. Even more has come out now, proving it's a hoax, but we've reposted that. Number one, before uh, last Sunday's Ray, this is a year ago. Intelligence analyst, every intelligence analyst, geopolitical commentator and head of state worked there. Salt was on record saying he was dead. I and mean, it goes through all those heads of state saying he was dead. Number two, the official narrative of how the raid unfolded completely collapsed within days of the announcement. It goes through how they changed the 40-minute shootout, the fake photo, they weren't watching live video feeds. Number three, the alleged body of bin Laden was hastily dumped in the sea. Number four, it goes through all the evidence. We're going to stop right there. You know what? It's all at InfoWars.com. And later, I'm going to air the ad that Obama, Osama Obama is running. Excuse me, Obama is running. The heroic killer of Osama is running. Where Bill Clinton goes, he's a hero. You know, that's who Obama is. Your phone calls, it's all coming up. Second hour. Only a few minutes away. The news is coming up, and we'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com.